How many was that? Five. Five. Five to six. But we pay, we pay monthly. Right. Based on what we would have paid anyway on our dispatch budget, minus the two records people. So right now we pay. I mean, so we, we didn't really. There's no savings this year simply because we're, we're paying in whatever we would have paid out of our dispatch budget. Okay, so and then at the end of the year, it'll be reviewed <coughs> to see where we wind up. Okay. So well, the equipment was a big part of it, too, though. So, yeah. was that that's that's helpful, though? right? The radios. Um, right. That was all grant money, though. It's just 3500 bucks just for one of these. Yeah. Wasn't it all grant? Um, what yeah. Okay. So that's a plus. Well, Yes, sir. We would have had to update it all of our equipment with ourselves it's, if it's, we didn't do it. At some point. Yeah, at some point. But not right now. Okay. All right. And then um, we we were able to um, go over uh, contracts, and that was a definite, um, I think, savings in some areas because we we asked for um, get backs. Um, and we did have a sheet. I don't. I think it's in my other file. Did anyone bring that? We had gotten information from Irene about the two uh, contracts that we negotiated just recently, and there was definitely a savings there. We got a couple of other contracts. Last year. Hmm? Last, mm -hmm. year. Last year, right? Right. Right. right, right. We did right. save some. Um, met, I don't know. Hospital medical. Can we uh, salvage any anything out of? Uh, cutting that again. Is We're going to be looking at some other plans, obviously. Other plans, so so that's a possibility. Okay. Possibility. Is that just within the same company or competing? <clears throat> I'll probably get quotes from all of them. We always get quotes. <laughs> whoever will quote us. You know, sometimes some of these companies won't quote us. So. So. And we were self-insured up till this year, I mean, we decided not to be self-insured to take a risk away from uh, that paying too many claims. So uh, we might look at that again too, if depending if we have any money to pay any claims. So, you know. Okay. In fact, I just got a call from. Um, oh shoot, I can't believe this. D'Angelo Ray, D'Angelo from Metro. I don't know what he wants, but I will call him back. He might be interested in coming back for. Uh, other plans. The other the other uh, contracts that we have all waste are, management. Go ahead. Waste management. Waste management. That's up next year. I believe so. That's another contract that we can renegotiate. Well, to me, too, that might be a contract that um, okay. has probably been talked about again with parking with another city. Even if we have to change our renewal dates to get on the same date, with the possibility of merge in two of those together to try to get a better rate out of waste mm -hmm. management. I think you might have to go out to bid. Or there's a new concept now that you can piggyback on, uh, yeah. on people that have already went out to bid, but that community has to allow you to uh, participate in the bid. Isn't that what Bedford did? Yes, and some people that, well actually one of the communities didn't want us to, I, I'm not quite, I'm trying to uh, turn around the logic there. It was. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember why they would not want us to, but there is some logic there. I can't remember. Okay, so that's that's a definite possibility. <clears throat> Any other contracts that you can think of that might be negotiable? Well, MBIS, to go back? Uh, Which? Safe Belt, MBIS, Safe Belt. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether or not we're going to. That's up at the end of the year as well. And what is that? The building department. Mm -hmm. Safe Belt, MBIS. Safe Belt's a new company that took over for MBIS. They bought, they did a stock transfer. So MBIS is uh, all now owned by the other company. Here's Reno, actually. I just called them about some questions. But anyway, be back in a second. Maybe Reno's contract. <laughs> Hello. Well, that's another one we need to go back yeah, to our know. own building department or continue on. Any other, any other yeah, contracts? Yeah, how much is that going to cost? Set up a whole new system, computers and everything. That's it right. Us You're right. Because we use our software and they charge us, so we'd have to buy our own software and hire a building commissioner and 
start all over. Yeah, will we be able to compare what we've been charged by outsourcing it to the last year of what it cost us to have it in house and kind of compare those two numbers? You could. I mean, we can get a, a workup. It would be a building commissioner, probably a couple secretaries, and about four inspectors, certified inspectors. Sure. And we also have an IT contract that uh, is ongoing. I don't know if we. No, I don't know. We booted the one guy. All right, thank you. We just have a support. Cavallo's gone. He's been gone for a long time. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Got that boot. That's interesting. Didn't know that. Oh. Nope. Surprise, nope. surprise. That's why I call him and he doesn't answer, huh? Could be. Okay. Communications, communications. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Mayor. Yeah. Communication. <laughs> Notes. You're on a need to know basis. Oh, okay. You don't need to know. Okay. <laughs> okay, the, the sale of equipment, is that something that, um, that um, we've, been, we've looked at this and uh, we have had um, junk sales on eBay, right? No. no not we, eBay. Was it eBay? What was e it? We went with Bedford. No, you're talking about the auction. You're talking auction. about two different things. Okay. We haven't done that auction for a few years. And we are also looking at the utility services. Any, any way to streamline or get a better rate? That's that's something that we we've talked with. Um, I think we've also talked with NOPAC about that. Currently, that's a current thing. And then the leases, the leases have uh, have got to be saving us money rather than buying outright. You know, I can't think of anything else, or at least my... I got a question. Question or I heard that we sold the leaf pickup truck. Is that true? We sold one. We sold one. We have two left. Make any money? What kind of money, man? Where we make them? I don't. I, there were some bids on it. I'll have to look for you. I'll let you know tomorrow. I don't know what the exact amount was. The high bidder. No, the, no big thing. Thank yeah. you. Eight thousand was. I want to say we might have got nine, or it might be a little higher. But higher. Let well, me I check think, for sure okay. before I. Okay. All right. Okay, I, that's, the, that's the only ones that I can think of that are ongoing. I don't, does anyone else have one that we have? Jackie has yes. cell phone. Oh, then we have gasoline consumption. Um, those, those are what would come under the cuts, probably, that we can continue? I'm not looking at cuts. I'm just looking at if you're talking about contracts, I'm sure we have a cell phone contractor somewhere, depending on who it is, if we can find something better. Well, we were going to Cavolo. So for what? The cell phones. Uh, I don't think we were. No, I mean, we he, he might have been shopping for us, but we've always had. I mean, I don't have a city cell phone. I, think I don't think many it. people do anymore. Yeah, I, I don't. don't I don't think I there's a lot of them. them. We're not talking about many okay. city phones. Just in our apparatus. Yeah. What are we talking about? And what was city? your other one, Tony? Okay, yeah. our drivers also have cell phones. Yeah. There you go. Did you talk about the energy audit, perhaps? Yes. And it, the, right. We're talking about no pick. Yeah. Yes. Or yes. whoever else does. But there's a strong possibility we could reduce our bills. So that's a real possibility with, uh, with the energy. It would be good. Okay. Do you want to move on to some light? Go ahead. We have any, anybody come to us about the billboards, cell towers? Uh, cell towers, I think, were tapped out. The billboards are always interested in some locations. There was one in Southgate Park Boulevard, but they weren't being too generous, so... No, that fell apart. Yeah, we, we weren't. They were offered very minimal money at the at the time, right in South Park, South, right across from the fire station right there. But uh, we could re... You know, I could approach them again. 
they, they're, they are interested in a few sites. It's got to be so many feet from the highway. It's got, there's a lot of regulations that uh, apply to. But well, actually, that's not accurate. Well, there's nothing on the highway because they're too close. Yes. The, the no existing provision. ones are too close to the sites that we have, and ODOT has uh, specific laws and regs that prohibit from on ramps, exit ramps, and from other billboards, so they don't become inundated. So the areas we have are too close. So that doesn't look like a, a possibility? Not along 480, no. Not unless ODOT changes their the regulations. Okay. And the one on Warrensville Center Road, Clear Channel was sold to a different company and they didn't want to pay us. Like, what was it, like 10 grand or something? It was a very it's a nice. small amount. Okay. Still have it on my desk. Okay, anything else that's uh, ongoing that we can add to our, um, our five year plan? Anything else that you can think of? Are you looking for something new or are we rehashing? Either. What we're I, it would say? be either. I think one of the things that we could do is some of the um, take a good look at what we have in our city land bank mm -hmm. for vacant land because there's just quite a bit right off of Broadway where the old ice cream shop was between that and it's those paper streets that were coming off of oh God, I can't think of the streets now but Gormack owned a lot the property oh. back there ice cream refresh my memory where are you talking about? the old ice cream shop on, on Broadway and what? Broadway's a long road. Going toward Rockside on the east so side. So close to street. Bedford? Yeah. Okay, I know what you're talking about. And there's there's all that land that Newman is going to purchase to build homes. Right. And that went belly up. And then Gormack went ahead and bought a lot of that land. And little by little, each one of those parcels are being tax foreclosed. Right. And I don't know how many are in our land bank, but we'd be curious just to see how much land we have to see if we could maybe market it to a developer for senior housing or independent living or something. As well as there's some interest in uh, Petites. So with the dollar store? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Sure, the ice cream land is maple and not better. Maple. Where does the maple? By, by DNM Motors? No, it's further up by Borowski. Oh, that right. Where Borowski and like Waterbury? Yeah. Water yeah. Water it's water a used car lot, isn't it right now? Oh, that yeah. ice cream store. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. okay. yeah. when you said Rockside, there is... <coughs> oh, not that. was called something. Yeah. Something cow or something. Yeah. Or so so J.D. by Ryder is there. But if you go down to Thomas, nice there's all that land yes. that goes straight to right. Broadway. Right. 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 All those are individually, yeah. I Wish think they're, they're, they're uh, subdivided into lots yeah. Yeah. Right. that we may be able yeah. to see. And it could be it could be residential. I'm saying there's paper streets there. Right? Oh, paper. I thought you said, I didn't think you said industrial. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, the land bank is, is a good, uh, I think, focus. Our land bank. Our, ours, oh, yes. yes. Yes, yes. Right. To develop. Yes. So, so yeah, I mean, we have to sell. our latest restrictions are a lot of people have been telling me, you know, they're not going to spend that kind of money to consolidate the lot and, and all that. So we might want to think about easing up some of the restrictions that we passed. It's not, it doesn't seem to be. Uh, Talk about those recent regulations that we changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the splitting the lot and then giving it to the people adjacent. Right. You know, the fee is is basically for surveyor. the surveyor and it's to protect us in case somebody goes ahead and sells their house and you know leaves the vacant lot for us then to maintain so everybody that I've talked to that's having a house demolished next to them nobody balked over the money and it's just shopping and and, and the uh, the estimate comes to about twelve hundred dollars but that's at the high end. I mean, it could be eight or nine hundred dollars, depending on the size of the lot, depending on who's going to do all the filing and the walking around the county to, you know, go to each department. They could save three hundred dollars right there by doing that. So it's not like we're charging them twelve hundred dollars for it. It's whatever they're going to need to pay to whoever their surveyor is, and then hold that money in escrow. So they're not going to know unless they get somebody out there or get bids. 
I understand, but it's just, just I don't think. Since they want it for free, is that what they're asking? No, no, I just don't think they want to shell out twelve hundred dollars or eight hundred dollars. Have you gotten Have you gotten complaints about it? Not complaints, but just you know, surprise. I, I guess that it would cost that you know. I want to know how much. What it would cost to be able to get a lot or half a lot, and what that's going to do to their property taxes. It's not going to add much of anything. Maybe a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars, if that, a year. But that much of anything is what they want to know. Yeah, how much? That they want to know how much. Is there anything? Going, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying that's all. They just want to know. They, they want to be able to get a figure. Well, you know, when we start getting some of these lots down, we could have some type of a forum for people that are interested in the side lots and have somebody come and talk mm -hmm. about all this. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, one of us could do that. Is there anything yeah, in, in the uh, two de uh, departments that is ongoing that is um, looking like it's a cost saving, aside from what I thought would be dispatch? Is there anything going on? Oh, early in the years. Yeah, from the police department, we had the vehicles all. We had a problem with the charging systems in all of our cars because they weren't wired incorrect. So it required the cars to be to run constantly, so that the batteries wouldn't go dead. So we we went to a different vendor and had them redo the, all the electrical work to make sure it was wired properly, so that the batteries wouldn't go dead. So now the vehicles don't run 24/7, so that reduces wear and tear on the engine in terms of engine hours. It also reduces the fuel consumption. Um, that's a good one. Significantly, so at least we're hoping it's significantly. I guess the proof will be in the pudding. Although we just got that done about June of this year, when we finally got all the cars reworked and redone. Because um, obviously that's a big thing. It, it, when it's the problem with it is, I mean, because there's no overhead protection for the vehicles, and they have to be ready to go at any time. You can't just shut them off. We don't have a big bay garage, you know, to park anything in. They're outside most of the time. So if the guys are on shift and they have to stop back at the station and do a report, they can't turn them off in the winter. But you know, in you get to have them running before even in the summer, and now we don't have to do that. So I don't know what the actual outcome will be on that in terms of significant savings, but I believe it'll reduce it greatly. So you know, like I said, idle engine hours are one of the worst things for a vehicle to begin with. So. Mm -hmm. Just stopping the idle time will help, but I believe it'll stop the fuel consumption too. And that was one of my uh, notes here that uh, the idling, and I think we still have idling on the bands as well. No, we don't. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, if you see it, then you should tell me because uh, I'm supposed to. Every once in a while, I Because I go into the van if I see it and I turn it off and then go find the driver. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could look at the price of gas. I don't know who we buy it from, but maybe we can get a better price. No, that's, that's a good one. Chief? The fire department with the last contract we negotiated with the firefighters or reduced demand. We went from 12 firefighters a shift down to nine. We also removed one individual from the Fire Prevention Bureau, so that was a total of 10 persons. So a little over a million dollars there. Now we reduced our minimum staffing uh, requirement from eight personnel per shift to six personnel per shift. That was another concession that the firefighters did in their last contract. With getting the grant uh, from the federal government, we'll be increasing the shift sizes to 11. And if we do not increase the minimum manning, then that should eliminate a lot of overtime. Mm -hmm. Uh, overtime was high this year just because of uh, people leaving and getting the test in place and the whole testing process. I think both Chief Papalarchik and I, our biggest concern right now is retention of personnel. Uh, no sooner do we get somebody in that you know they're they're snagged up by another community. We had steered more towards getting experience. We needed to get experience to be at a minimum staffing level. Now we're gearing more towards getting somebody that has all the education and the credentials, but maybe not as experienced. We can afford to do that now by increasing our staff level a little bit. We also looked at uh, this year at all the contracts and uh, 
expenditures that we had in the department and there was a lot that hadn't been reviewed in quite some time for it. For example, medical or oxygen, we use that on a continual basis with the rescue squads and that hadn't been reviewed in a long time, it was just renewed. So we renegotiated that and, and saved a substantial amount with that. Um, both apparatus that are going to be replaced by the new vehicles that we ordered are being evaluated for their worth and uh, I don't think that the rescue squad is going to be worth that much but the pumper that we will be the reserve pumper that we'll be getting rid of hopefully will be worth at least something that's worth noting so we're waiting on those figures to come back um, vehicle maintenance has been a huge issue um, with the sur service department trying to juggle a lot of the vehicles for service uh, some of the expenditures that we had this year was just lack of maintenance, not, not for any, it, there's just so much you can do. I mean, when we're plowing in the winter time, that's priority. If something breaks on our trucks, they always get it fixed for us. It's the prevent, preventive maintenance that's lacking. So we're looking at some of the vendors that we had and trying to see what kind of prices we can get for that. You know, if it's if something is costing us a lot of money because it's not getting frequent oil changes or whatever, then we need to review how we can do that instead of throwing our money away all the time on that. So that's an action. Uh, our department also had a, uh, the city had a smoke detector program that we used to offer to the residents. Now, the American Red Cross has a program that uh, they'll provide the city with batteries and smoke detectors free of charge. If we can figure out how to assist people with installing them, whether through somebody through the department or some private or civic organization. So I'm meeting with that individual Wednesday afternoon to see if we can get that for So I mean, we're trying to do what we can, but. Excellent, that sounds you know, if we If we go up to being the, the new members that we hire won't have accrued the vacation time and the time off that, mm -hmm. that seasoned employees have, perhaps when we go to up to 10, members on ship who can operate that third rescue squad and those rescue squads are still a revenue for the city. Uh, where we outsource all the time to have Bedford or another city to come in to get rescue calls, perhaps staffing station one a little bit heavier and, and having them jump to that third rescue squad can offer a little bit of income from that way too. So hey, Chief, did we ever um I remember at one point in time we were trying to follow up with a collection agency or something for some of the calls that the state go out on. Is that is that materialized at all? I was just talking to Mandy the other day. I we were just bringing that back up. I believe that was to Attorney General's, Attorney General's office. office that they were going to go back on some right. of those delinquents right. and do it. I know that with the new reporting system uh, that Mandy manages, uh, and I don't have the statistics in front of me, but we have been doing much better than we have last year as far as collections on the ambulance calls. Good. Um, well, go ahead. Just going to on that, but as far as the reduction in staffing, up, so we reduced our minimums as well. So we dropped one person per shift on each one. So there's somewhat of a cost savings there in terms of the personnel costs. Um, probably not, not enough to offset the number of people that left. Um, part of the issue, of course, is that when people leave, especially tenured people, you know, we have three retirements and a lot of people, a lot of contact. Mm -hmm. Any savings that you're going to get from them leaving in terms of the cost of, you know, whether you're hiring a new person who doesn't have the same rate or doesn't have anything else, I mean, the buyouts are tremendous in terms of the amount of compensatory time, the amount of sick time that's bought out. Mm -hmm. um, and that, quite honestly, I think in the police budget, you'll see at the end of the year that that's just going to offset any savings that you would have got by not having those people there. I mean, our staffing's down. We lost, well, it'll be 13 because we got a guy going to Bedford probably next month. But I mean, um, Bedford's really raiding us. Yeah, wow. Yeah, they have, we have six people on their list. Um, to Chief DeVito's point, I mean, that, that's one of the biggest issues that we're facing as departments so throughout. I mean, is retention. Um, people have no confidence and no faith that this is going to get better. And so, and they haven't had a raise in seven years, so they're going wherever the money is, especially when they have, when their pensions are dependent on it. So, I mean, the, the I think in the long run, as he said, though, too, you'll see some savings just because you're, gonna, you're not going to have tenured people like that. You're going to have mm -hmm. the majority, you know, better than half the police department right now, especially the ones on patrol have less than two years' experience. 
like two or three years on with maybe a couple, of, most of the guys in the middle have all left. So, and then you have people like myself and, you know, the administration um, that bumps up. And the detective bureau staffing is down, so there's a little bit of a savings there, but in terms of because you're not paying somebody a premium rate right to do that, but um, throughout, I mean, things are pretty much gutted that way. And, you know, we, over the course of time, I don't know if it was this year, but we, we got rid of our evidence staff. In other words, we had bugs of special officers that did the evidence work. We don't have them anymore. They're gone. Uh, we got rid of the secretary and the detective bureau. So now my secretary pulls most of the duty for pretty much everybody um, that's left administratively. So um, we keep doing more with less, but I mean, at some point you're just going to hit a point where you can't do any more. But from a cost savings, I guess that's where you'll look at it in terms of we can hire six more, theoretically, unless something changes after the next meeting. Have you been impacted by overtime as much as the fire? No, we're devastated by it. I mean, even by, you know, part of the, the reason for reducing the minimums was twofold. I mean, one, because we, there's a human cost. Um, there's just too much there, but there's also a, uh, and, the, and of course, the monetary cost. But we couldn't, you know, you can't pay that many hours of overtime in a given week. But, you know, there's also a safety factor involved. Mm -hmm. So we reduced as much as we could that we feel safe to do, and we didn't get any any bounce back from the union as of yet in terms of unsafe labor, you know, unsafe conditions. But don't you still have, don't they still have a contract to uh, negotiate? Yeah, it's supposed, we're supposed to go into fact finding. Um, there's a meeting, I don't know when it is yet, it's supposed to be scheduled for the next week or two, but they've been negotiating that for months now. Almost a year? Well, I think the sticking point was they had the meetings, yeah, and then they went into fact finding, so mm -hmm. now it's all, it's a snail's pace. Would become a training facility for other suburbs, we should just charge them for it. This <laughs> <laughs> be the reality. Yeah. Also, you know, look, we have to make some with the overtime problems. That sometimes, like, do I bring up an officer in and that's on overtime to try a traffic case? You know, sometimes I just end up dismissing them, to be honest with you, just to save money if it's nothing serious, you know. So, we're trying to watch that too. I'm not going to spend money if I'm not make it, buddy, you know, I mean, for something minor. And also, it's, we're in the middle of our amnesty month, I don't know if, any, if you know, all of you know, to try to get the uh, people who owe us money upstairs are probably, I don't know how much it is, but it's, it's got to be 100000 or 200000 at least, and, uh, but so far, nobody's calling, <laughs> go figure, but... Um, Did we but advertise it, John? We, we put it to, out to all the, the news channels, we put it out to all the newspapers, we put it out to uh, all the emails, and I think we might have got one call, <laughs> maybe. So, but if they don't, uh, if they, they don't uh, respond this time, we're going to forfeit their bonds, for not, which we should have probably done a long time ago, but if there's any bonds that I haven't been forfeited yet, we're going to forfeit them, which there could be you know, fifty to a hundred thousand dollars, and we're trying to clear out all our old warrants and capuses that for crimes that you know that were committed some time ago uh, in our spare time. But but uh, what else? Let's see here. Can we go back? To oh, we're going after some invoices that are outstanding for like uh, engineering invoices. Rent hasn't been paid mm -hmm. down through the county, and you know, we're trying to. We don't retrieve that money so that, uh, you know, we, you know, we don't have to pay it. We, they should be paying it. And then, uh, Chief, did you mention that your monitor, heart monitors and battery support system, I, when I stepped away, you guys are looking to save some money there too, aren't you? Yeah, we're that, yeah. So we're that trying to look at a lot of things, actually. Yeah, every year we have to get the uh, heart monitors in that serviced, and it's a rather expensive charge, so, you know, all that's being reviewed. Cop maintenance and a lot of that is, you know, the pump maintenance on a truck, the ladder maintenance, those all have to get certified, and you have no choice. You can't operate without that being done. And a lot of the cost that you pay to those companies is obviously them insuring themselves for that process. But uh, you know, we we've had some reduction in equipment in the last couple of years, and I don't think that's reflected in their prices. So that's being reviewed. And we've got uh, people coming on board for both of you, so that, that will be a little bit of a help, correct? Well, we're in the process. You're still in the process? Well, I mean, we have we have our list. We've, we're going through the, you know, we've started the backgrounds on, okay. as you we past the first 12, and we're probably into the second 12 already. We did 25%, but 
Um, we're waiting for polygraphs to come back before we do any interviews.